Dr. Joel Robbins is truly one of a kind. He is a natural health practitioner, a nationally known author and lecturer in the field of nutrition, natural health care, and alternative medicine, as well as a licensed chiropractor and naturopathic doctor. He has been helping patients from around the world to achieve health naturally since 1978. If you're someone that needs a persuasive perspective on how and why to live a healthier lifestyle, then listen up. Because Dr. Robbins brings health discernment down to a level in which all can understand. He has a heart of gold, and you will love his analogies. He is famous for them. He's a doctor that doesn't want you to live like you have to be perfect. He's not a fan of following diets. He just wants you to understand healthy guidelines and that your health is like a bank. You're either positively investing or negatively withdrawing. I'm glad you're here to listen to this motivational and inspirational interview with the one and only Dr. Joel Robbins. Hey, it's Autumn McLeese, your birth doula and crunchy mama source for choosing healthier alternative ways of living. Because when you know better, you do better. Join me as we explore topics that might challenge what you know to be true when it comes to health, birth, and beyond. Let me help you think outside the box and empower you with steps to do better. Your best life could be on the other side of this next podcast. So join me now. All right, friends, today we have an incredible guest with us. Dr. Robbins is actually someone that I grew up listening to off and on throughout my childhood and early adult years. My dad found one of his health tapes in my younger years and just really was drawn to the truth and the wisdom that he spoke when it came to health and natural health at that. And so I am so honored to have Dr. Joel Robbins with us today. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Robbins. My pleasure. All right, friends, for those of you that don't know Dr. Robbins, um, let's hear from him now. Dr. Robbins, share with us how you came to find your passion for nutrition and preventative medicine. Um, and, you know, let's pay some respects in regards to, you know, traditional medical mainstream medicine. Um, why didn't you go more that route as opposed to nutritional preventative medicine? When I was in high school, my dad had a, a health problem that medical doctors couldn't figure it out. And he finally consulted with a nutritional quack a chiropractor who was in nutrition and uh, it brought dad back. I mean, he had turned out to be hypoglycemia, severe case. I mean, my dad had a, a genius IQ and, and very gentle guy. And suddenly that all changed, but through nutrition um, he came back and I was going to go to medical school. Um, but then I decided, no, let's go this other route. And so I went to chiropractic, college. And then um, about 18 months into that, I got, I got bored. <laughs> so I, I actually applied to go to seminary. <laughs> and I, I was telling, it. I was telling our uh, former pastor about that story. And he said, you must have been frustrated if you're going to go to seminary. <laughs> so I started reading, it's actually a patient handed me a book on nutrition. I started reading it and I just got so excited. I said, that's what I want to do. And I, because of the background with my dad, seeing him change, it just clicked. And so then I just uh, went to naturopathic school and just have continued to, to read and take seminars and educate. So the uh, I don't have a problem with traditional medicine at all uh, relative to life-saving characteristics that they have and abilities that they have. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in any other world in the country if I had a life-threatening crises. But when it okay. comes to health, it's not health care. They don't have, it's not health care, it's crisis care. And so here's the analogy I like to use the, the picture. Let's say uh, there's a guy in ICU who had a massive heart attack and the cardiologist comes in and he says, uh, Mr. Jones, yesterday you had a massive heart attack. You should have died, but because of modern medicine, you're alive. Now, you're on some medications that are keeping you, sustaining you, but they have side effects 
and uh, I'm going to send you to a nature path. He will educate you as to why you had this problem and help you get back to health. And I'm going to monitor that and then slowly wean you off of the medications. That, that's what I'd love to see. But it ain't so. It's one or the other in most cases. Yeah. But just seeing the, the, the miracles, as I call them over the years, of a, where patients had no hope from medical profession. Uh, and I'll say, look, let's just make some changes with your lifestyle. And most people are, just, are ignorant, seriously, of, of what should, right. how they should live. And so that's what the word doctor means. It means teacher. And a teacher is a mirror to show them where they've gone astray and then educate them as to where they need to go the other way. So we that's it. Doing our, we certainly aren't doing a very good job at teaching these days, are we? No. And even the, I get frustrated somewhat with the natural health care profession, too, because it's all about which herb to take, which vitamin, which acupuncture needle. Which No, let's talk about why you got in this mess in the first place. And so a lot so of natural good. health practitioners are just have a medical mindset, as I call it. It's just, and patients, you know, yeah, it's difficult. People don't want to change their lifestyle. I get that. But if we educate them, this is why you're in this mess you're in. So that's, that's what I'm a, I'm an educator, I'm a doctor, edu a teacher. Yeah. I love that. And one of the things I love most about you, which we'll get into probably some of that here soon in our interview, but your analogies for health, you make it all so understandable to the average person, but in such layman's terms that makes it very motivating and eye-opening. So I, that's one thing I just love about you. <laughs> if you could boil down disease to the basic underlying issues, like let's take away the names, the fancy names that we've labeled all of these health ailments and these health struggles. And, you know, you could boil it down to the basic underlying principles. In your opinion, what would those be? There was a, a doctor, and I cannot remember his name, but uh, his French uh, medical doctor who had that same the question of what causes disease because and it still still puzzles scientists' minds today if they would just but if they listened to what he, his research did they would get the picture but here's our, our DNA and every time a cell runs its lifespan some cells live three days in the body some live a year but the DNA is passed off and the DNA has a perfect picture of the of what that cell should look like. So the question is, why would this new cell not be healthy as it should be? And it boils down to two things. Is there the right resources to build a new cell? That's called nutrition. And or is there interference, which would be toxins, radiation, stress, things like that. So if those things are out of balance, then the body will make a new cell as best it can based on the, the blueprint. So this doctor took a a chicken embryo and put it in a beaker and every day he would take out the waste and put in new nutrition and it lived for 32 years. Now wow. the life of a chicken is seven years and he, he even, he died before the, the embryo died and his uh, lab assistant took over and kept going for two years and just got bored and said, <laughs> so <laughs> he just let it die. So okay. that that's the, the, the deal is each generation of cells, if the, if the environment is not what it should be, gets it further, further, further away from the ideal. And eventually it shows up as a symptom that we um, call, you know, disease or a pain or ache or whatever. Now, while I'm on that train of thought, here's our great hope and healing. That DNA is still there. What if we change that environment? What if we start putting nutrition in? What if we start to do the best we can to get rid of the irritants, the toxins, the stress factors? Now, it's not a perfect world. We can't be 100% on that. But that's how true healing can come about. Well, and there is so much we can do. There's certain things we can't do, right? Because right. we just live in a toxic world. But then we might think we're eating healthy, but 
there's some learning to do there. We might think, oh, there's nothing wrong with my personal care products, but there's definitely things to switch out and do better with there. So it's all about knowing better so we can do better, right? Yeah, and that's a, that's a thing there, as you said, alluded to, there, there are a lot of things we cannot avoid in, in this world, but the things that we can change, why not? It's our best advantage to stay, maintain our health and living longer. And it's, it's really the quality of life. That's, that's the main thing. You know, I'd, most Americans in their 60s or, uh, and beyond are on five or six medications, have no joy in life, <laughs> and they don't know who they are. And so we can improve our quality of life to, to have our mind and our body till the day we die, potentially. That's what we're after. I love that. And that's truly what you're in the business of doing is helping people that want to be helped live that, that life full of vitality, right? And passion and awareness. And that's why I'm here. That's why we're talking (laughs) because I believe that just like you said, it's almost like the life has been zapped out of people. Like they're just kind of barely making it through the day or they're walking zombies on their medications you know, their zest for life is gone and they feel so fatigued and have so many different ailments and things that they're not even able to be who they were created to be. And I feel like that's a tragedy when we live in that place. We're not really living, right? No. And, and the, another principle that you're t- touching on there is that our mind and our emotional realm gets their energy from the physical body. So as our health goes down, the body has to cut some things from the budget because the body's going to take top billing with what energy is in the bank account. And so the emotional realm is the first to get cut. So depression and anxiety are extremely high in this nation. And pretty much everybody you know, uh, I should say, out of the five people you know are on some kind of medication for that. And then as the mind goes down, then with the cloudy thinking and the memory recall, the mental processing slows down. And then we just start giving up. Now, our body follows the lead of the mind. So if we're not excited about life, the body says, why am I here? I want to tell you a story. His name was Joe, 62 years old. He had a neurological condition. He was, had been in a wheelchair for two years. And he came to see me, and we lined out a nutritional program. I said, I don't know if I get you out of the wheelchair or not, but let's, let's why not try? Our body's pretty amazing if we give it a chance. That's all it asks for. Just give it, it knows how to heal. A doctor cannot do any healing, all right? <laughs> all I can do is give the body. And so six months went by, and he, uh, no change. And so by then, we had a relationship, and um, I said to him, Joe, it's my way of thinking as a Christian, as long as we're in this world and have ability, we should be doing something to further the kingdom. If you were to get out of that wheelchair, what difference would you make in this world? He said, I don't know. I said, well, go home and ask God. So he was back in two weeks and he had this amazing vision of how to reach people through his church and so forth. And, you know, I said, get busy. He said, I can't. I'm in a wheelchair. I said, yes, you can. You can start praying every day. You can write your curriculum. You can make contacts. Well, three months later, he was walking two miles a day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the the attitude changed. But I'm saying, to follow up your point is, as we get down physically and the mind goes down, the emotions go down, and we just have no hope and we get drugged up. and, And so it's a combination of the two things. Mm, I love that. And I, I love that story and I can see where that could very much be the case. Yeah. Mm. Now they don't all work out like that. Just so you know. Okay. (laughs) So let's talk about inadequate nutrition. Mm -hmm. You had just shared about how, you know, our cells can only be as healthy as, you know, what our environment is. And essentially our environment is very much Nutrition is a big influencer on our environment, obviously. So what does the body do or what takes place when it has inadequate nutrition? We're deficient in vitamins and minerals. 
Well, as I said, it, it it's can't repair the cells. It can't make new healthy cells because our bodies are exposed to all kinds of stuff every day. And it's just normal wear and tear, just living. And so without those adequate nutrients, it just cannot repair and mend and build uh, in, in a healthy way. So it, again, it has the ability. It just needs to be given that opportunity. So as far as, you know, nutrition, the, the things we need to look at are, are we eating healthy? That's one thing, but are we leaving off the negative things? So I like to put food into three groups. So the first column, the plus column would be everything fresh and raw, fruits and vegetables, raw nuts, raw seeds. Uh, next column, the neutral, neutral column would be healthy soups, steamed vegetables, whole grains, baked potatoes, uh, good quality fish, chicken, turkey. That's the neutral column. And then the, the negative column, you can imagine what's in there, right? Fried foods, caffeine and sugar and so forth. So we should shoot for 70% of our diet over a period of a week. It doesn't have to be every day. Out of the 70% should be from the plus column. And then 20 to 25% from the neutral column. And notice I said 25%. Yeah, I leave room for people wanting to have a splurge here and there. That, and that's it's not a deal breaker. But the majority of the time it should come. And, and why is that from the plus column? It's all about enzymes. We can hand ourselves all the great nutrition, uh, meaning proteins, good quality proteins, fast carbs, vitamins, and even minerals. But without enzymes, nothing happens. That's what makes it happen. Our only source of enzymes are from raw foods. Our body cannot make enzymes. So we have to come in from raw foods. Now we'll take those enzymes and convert them to, science doesn't know how many enzymes our body uses. I mean, I'm not, I don't mean amount, I'm talking about the types. So probably millions. Right. But, but we have to have them from an outside source. The average American goes 10 days without eating anything raw. Wow. Yeah. It's it's miraculous we're still alive when you put it this way. I mean, we're eating dead food. Yeah. So, I mean, we look around and we see everybody falling apart at the same rate. And we assume that's normal, and it's not. There are there are nations around the world that uh, or sections around the world who eat primarily raw, and they're living to be 110, 100 years of age. But that's not the issue. They have quality of life. They don't. They don't have illness. They're not on drugs, and so, so that that's where we need to go to. And of course, it's so foreign to Americans. Uh, so we, as I said, we look around and we see everybody else is falling apart, and, and the doctors even say, "Well, you're 65 years old. That's why you're falling apart." No, mm -hmm. it's because of your diet. It's a sad paradigm to have that bestowed upon you when you can change. You yeah. know, we have so much power, and with our our miraculous bodies that God gave us that are able to heal and reverse so much. We just are lacking to give it the tools, right? Yeah. And yeah, you know, I, I feel like besides the eating, eating healthier, getting a juicer and I've written a book on juicing and it's on my website. You can find that. Do you uh, get the enzymes through juicing? Oh like yeah. If you don't want to sit and munch on a carrot, you can juice a carrot and still get those enzymes. And the, the nice thing about juicing, it, it cuts back on a, a tremendous amount of energy the body has to spend to digest. So you get this all this nutrition sort of wholesale, you might say. And then I do feel there's a need for supplements, uh, at, least, at least in the beginning. To, I think of supplements as getting a second job to help the body get out of debt. So it's not a... Yeah, maybe for the rest of our life, a multi, good multivitamin and some digestive enzymes or something. I remember one time a construction worker uh, consulted with me and went over his results and said, okay, here's the dietary guidelines for you, and here's some supplements I'd recommend. And he said, can I just take the supplements and keep eating my hamburger and fries and meat and potatoes? I said, okay, that's up to you, but that's like heating your house in the wintertime with the windows and doors open. <laughs> There's one of those analogies I love. Yeah. So I think of juicing as a supplement to a healthy diet to help us get caught back up. Mm -hmm. 
get out of debt. I love that. And we, I love to juice. So that's good news. Yeah. Um, speaking of enzymes and, you know, myself, I'm a birth doula. I would love to venture into just quickly, you know, the new mom that obviously nature's best, uh, is nursing your baby. What does that, what do those two different paths look like? Just in case we have some pregnant moms listening that are really on the fence with, should I nurse my baby? Oh, it sounds so hard. I'm just not sure I can do it. Yes, formula costs money, but it's just so much more convenient. Let's dive into the health difference and what is taking place with that baby that when a baby is nursed and maybe enzymes and the nutrition and the healthy fats versus, you know, formula. What would you say to that? Very few diseases are present at conception, but we do inherit genetic weaknesses. Now, what what causes those weaknesses to manifest into a disease? It has to do with uh, what we're eating, because they they don't, they the, if we abuse the body, deprive it of nutrition, then those weaknesses start to manifest. So where does that begin? And it begins at conception, what's the mother eating? And then we go to the, once the baby's born, if the mother's nursing and hopefully eating a healthy diet, that, then that there's enzymes, there's life, there's nutrition going into that body. Whereas when a formula comes along, we're beginning the stage of starting to set, set the stage rather for bringing to, to surface the genetic weaknesses that are already mm. present. And so why not set that foundation with nursing? It, it's, yeah, it's just crazy not to. I can't tell you how many times that young parents have brought their kids in with the chronic earaches, ear infections, sinus infections. And I say, what are you feeding that child? Well, formula. And I say, you know, uh, let's change that. Now, I'll, we can talk about an alternative once the mother stopped nursing, okay? But just, and even, even beyond nursing, uh, a child's five, six, seven years old, I'll just say, why don't you just make some dietary changes? You're putting in things that are poisoning the body, that are not feeding the immune system, and, and just simply by making some diet changes, ear, ear infection's gone, you know? So we've got a lifelong of stress we're gonna face, why not set a good foundation by nursing? It's just that simple. And it's just full of life and full of enzymes and full of friendly bacteria and all, all kinds of nutrition. Yeah. I love that. I wasn't aware when I had my first son, you know, I attempted to nurse for the first couple months and then just moved to formula, which I didn't know enough to get organic formula. Not that that's, I mean, it's a little better, I guess. But um, then once I kind of woke up a little bit more and was farther along in my health journey and I had my second baby, you know, I was able to nurse her and, um, you know, so I'm, I'm happy that we we're able to touch on that. No, no judgment towards moms that, that don't know any better, but that's why we're here to right. educate and awaken people so that they do know better and they know, you know, essentially, um, the foundation that you're, that you can set if taking the route of, of, uh, nursing. So, so the, the organic formulas don't have any enzymes in them, but there's, there's no toxins or chemicals. The other formulas are, are just purely chemical. And, uh, so we're starting the poison, never mind depriving the, those, the child of uh, nutrition, but actually just putting toxins in, uh, mm -hmm. If you want for a second, I'll talk about vitamin supplements. There's, there's three types. There's what are called whole food. They come from fruits and vegetables. And in, in manufacturing them to remove the water and the fiber, they use low temperatures below 117 degrees Fahrenheit because above that kills the enzymes. So that everything is there intact. Those are whole food. They're more expensive, but you're getting your money's worth. The second type are called fractionated which are from fruits and vegetables, but in removing the water and the fiber, they kill, they use high temperatures and chemicals. 
And so it destroys a lot of the value, most of the value. And then there's the third type, which are called uh, synthetic. And they are totally laboratory made. Totally, yeah. And so uh, our, our wonderful FDA says that, yeah. So for example, vitamin C all, is it made up of six different components. All vitamins are, are complex. But somewhere back, whenever, when, every time a vitamin was discovered, uh, they'd pick one component and say that equaled the vitamin. So with vitamin C, ascorbic acid is considered vitamin C. That's no, not. It's, it's just like the, say the, the banana peel is a banana. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you can make in a laboratory, take hydrochloric acid and corn syrup and make hydrochloric acid. I'm sorry, make ascorbic acid rather put it in a bottle, and can label it vitamin C. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, but a whole food vitamin C has all the components. So when you talk about formulas, back to that, that's what a lot of the fractionated vitamins are in there or the synthetic vitamins. Mm. Well, and on the topic of synthetic and formula, let's talk about pasteurization. In our culture, you know, we have, and let's even expand that to radiated foods and maybe some pesticides. What are these types of conventional practices, if you could call it that, for our food industry that they're using? What is this doing to our health? Well, let's talk about the motivation behind pasteurization and radiation and so forth. Um, it was discovered in the 1940s, enzymes really became, uh, uh, science became aware of enzymes. So I keep going back to that. That's, that's, that's the core to our health. But they figured out it was enzymes that cause fruits and vegetables to ripen. And if they're not consumed, the enzymes cause them to decay. So it's the enzymes that they said, oh, if we can kill the enzymes, we can keep the food on the shelf longer. And, and grocers love that. So they don't have to throw out their, their produce, right? Mm, yeah. And same with radiation. And so it's, it's, it's not, I don't know of any specific negative other than what we've already discussed, is that it's just depriving the body of live enzymes that run the show, run the body. Uh, radiation, uh, radiated foods in, in Europe are outlawed. Uh, they did. They have found some negatives from that. Uh, I don't recall the specifics of that, but it's not just the fact that food's no good, but there are some negatives added to that as a consequence. But when we pasteurize something, when we cook it, can it, it just destroys the, the, the enzyme, the, the critical part of our health. Hmm. And pesticides. So now we're adding Pest toxins. We're adding toxins now to the story. And it's just one more thing the body has to deal with is, and, and, and toxins, uh, when they get in the body, the body has to pay rent on them, as I, I say it. It's, it, it'll store them uh, in, somewhere in the body, because usually the body's not healthy enough to eliminate them as an average American. And so it stores them, but it has to pay rent. It's like when you go store something in a, a storage place, you've got to pay rent. And so it's just, mm. so as I tell people, uh, say you're a single gal. Now, I understand you have two cars. You're paying two car payments. Why not get rid of one of those cars right then? You've got a pay raise just for doing that. So the less toxins we're putting in, the, the more energy, resources, nutrition is available for health. Oh, I love that analogy. That is a great one. That yeah. is such a great one. Um, I know you've talked about fasting, and I'd love to dive into that as to the benefits of fasting in regards to the body working towards healing. How is fasting helpful? When we eat food, even if we're eating healthy foods, the body has to spend quite a bit of energy to process that food. It's not just digesting it. Then it has to go to the liver, and the liver has to convert it to a version that our cells use and uh, send it out to the cells. So that, that all takes energy and nutrition. Now, with raw foods, we get more, more benefit than negative, even though we have to go through all that. So it's like the 
the cost of doing business. You know, you have to pay rent, to, but to keep your store open. Um, but when we fast, the body doesn't have to spend any energy processing food, and it can devote all its resources to detoxing and and building cells. I've seen people on, on water fast who were anemic going into the water fast actually come out of the anemia on the water fast. Now think about that. How in the world could that happen? It means the resources are there, but the body couldn't access them. They were tied up elsewhere. That's so good. Yeah. So fasting is, is good. I, uh, you know, a three, uh, one day a week, it's a good idea to water fast. If you can't do that then juice for one day a week or, or fast till supper time, the healthy meal, uh, intermittent fasting is getting more popular. And I think it's a good idea. You know, uh, after supper, don't eat till noon or 10 o'clock to when your body says, I got to have something, but just kind of make, do something like that consistently. Um, a three day water fast is good. An extended one, you really should be under somebody's care who knows how to monitor that, uh, you know, after 30 day, 30 day water fast. Yeah. Wow. I was reading a book recently that was talking about the liver and how the liver wakes up earlier than you do to start trying to clean house a little bit and whatnot. And it made me think about just, you know, how important it is to kind of wake up and just drink water, like just kind of flush your system and allow your body to clean house a little bit. Whereas some people wake up and they stuff it with, you know, a McDonald's breakfast or, you know, um, all sorts of unhealthy foods and things. And so I love that, that that's so important that we take that time for our body to rest. So it, it get, then can focus on other things that need to be addressed in our health. When we're sleeping, because we're not eating, and secondly, we're at rest. I mean, the brain is turned off for the most part. Uh, we make two thirds of our energy for the next day. We build twice as many cells at night during as opposed to during the day. We also do most of our cleansing and detoxing during during the night. So the average American who's not healthy, when they wake up, the, their bloodstream is to- full of toxins because during the night when they're fasting, the, the cells start dumping all these toxins and, and the liver's going, whoa. And, and, and so we don't feel so, so good in the mornings. And so people go eat their bacon and eggs and cup of coffee and what that does, it shuts down all that cleansing, puts everything back in, in the closets. And, oh, I feel better. So obviously I needed that bacon and eggs. I needed that coffee. And it, it's a it's a false understanding of what's really happening there. And as you get cleaner and cleaner, you wake up and feel fine. You're not even hungry maybe till lunchtime. So. Wow. I love that. Um, I love your analogies, Dr. Robbins. Do you have a couple more analogies that you can share with us? It can be in any aspect of health, any sort of analogy you want. Do you have any that come to mind that there are ones that you, you know, say often or have said throughout your, <laughs> your time in practice? When I talk to people about changing their lifestyle to a healthier diet, I'll say, Let's say that everything you're eating right now is a negative. And that negative column we talked about earlier, or close to it anyway, uh, let's, that would equal three meals a day, seven days a week. That's a minus 21 towards your health, minus 21 every week towards your health. What if next week you ate 11 healthy meals and still bad, 10 bad meals? That's a plus one towards your health. That's a lot better off than minus 21. And just just start there because I think people, you know, I, I talk to them about diet. I never say this is a diet. It's, it's, it's healthy guidelines uh, how to eat. So don't think in terms of trying to be perfect because you'll run the other way after three days <laughs> mm-hmm. or even today, maybe. I don't know. But so if you just think in terms of this is a process and and I'll tell you the story about a, how I came on that was a fellow years ago he had colon cancer and he had read my juicing book and he said, oh, and I don't promise, by the way, cures through juicing, but he just thought that's what he wanted to do. And he didn't want to do chemo and all that stuff. He said, I just want you to monitor me. 100% juice. That's it. So 
Uh, it's called the juice diet. That's, that's my term for it. So he's back in a month for a checkup. And I said, how's it going? He said, I'm fine. I'm okay with 100% juice. Uh, but I crave ice cream. And he said, can I have ice cream? I said, well, you've got cancer. Really? You want to eat ice cream? And then I, I sat and I thought, you know, he's probably spending more energy slash nutrition, stressing, wishing, hoping, and resisting than whatever little ice cream. I said, I said, how about this? One scoop of ice cream once a week. How's that? He said, that's great. I can do that. And he, he beat the cancer eating, oh his, ice, eating his ice cream. Yeah. So it, that's amazing. So that, that's just uh, kind of put it in perspective is yes. people think of this as a religion and it's not. Uh, if you invited me to your home and you didn't know my dietary guidelines and you put out fried chicken, steak, whatever, you know what I would do? I would eat it because one meal is not worth losing a friendship. Mm -hmm. But I don't do that all the time. Right. Right. You're busy investing, storing up that mm -hmm. bank account within your body yeah. so that it can handle those times when you, you pull from it. It's so, not going to completely de deplete the bank account, right? Right. So write that one down. One bad meal is not worth a friendship. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Let's talk about the three main principles to live by when it comes to health. Um, you, you know, just for the average person looking to do better. So you've kind of touched on these things. Is there a way to kind of um, make them even more concise or anything else extra you'd like to add? Well, let's just run through a, a day of diet. So if you, if you want to eat something in the morning, if you're hungry, ask your body, if you're hungry, uh, have a smoothie. Uh, lunch, have something light, salad or fruit salad, salad, baked potato, and then for supper, have salad, and, and that's if you're going to have animal protein, have it then. The, we've always heard the opposite the big meal the first of the day. No, because the body's still in the fasting mode, it's trying to clean house, and so we want to give it more opportunity to have the healthier, larger meal in the evening when we're more relaxed. Why do a lot of people go out to lunch at work and get back to work rather? And they, they fall asleep because the body says, I, in the, in the state of health you're in, I can't both digest this meal and keep you awake. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, so uh, the digestion. Is that due, is that due to not enough enzymes or the digestive tract is burdened? No, that's just, it just costs energy to, to, to digest an unhealthy meal. We're talking about people eating ham hamburger and fries or whatever at lunchtime, health, okay. heavy meal, and they're not, they're not healthy. So the body says, I can't do both. Keep you awake. <laughs> it's, it's, I call it energy economics. And so, so the, so we eat the, uh, a healthy meal at lunchtime, so it could be a salad, baked potato, or just a fruit salad, or, and then the heavier meal in the evening. But again, we're not talking about baked potato. I mean, uh, steak and potatoes. Although, okay, in the beginning you may still do that for a while. But um, so that'd be number one. Uh, sleep is important, as I described earlier. We make most of our cells at night, so we detox, we do all that stuff. So we we need to be consistent with getting to sleep. And then there's this thing called exercise. Uh, and uh, people uh, tend to think they've got to train for the Olympics to get enough exercise, and therefore they do not do any. And it's, it's amazing how little we need to do. I mean, just walking a half a mile and being out of breath, and you're done. That's plenty. So, so the exercise, and then there's attitudes. Uh, all important. What's our goals? What's our visions for life? We, we need to be uh, moving towards something uh, that's challenging our gifts, talents, and abilities. If we're not, the body says, I don't know why I'm here. And mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I'll set some goals and work towards them. And I have a saying that, or a question, I should say, who's going to be healthier? The person with a lousy diet and a great attitudes or one with lousy attitudes and a great diet, lousy diet, great attitudes or lousy attitudes and a great diet. The one with the great attitudes. Now, wow. even though I put I, I'm a I'm in all the nutrition, 
but it's the attitudes are so like that example I told you about Joe from the wheelchair, you know. So attitudes are so we need goals, we need visions, we need be motivated. And if we have our health, it's easier to do that. We 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 think more clearly, right. we're more excited about life. I love that. How long have you been practicing, uh, Dr. That's, Robinson? That's uh, about 43 years now, yeah. You are just a wealth of knowledge. Well, those, those uh, your, the, the cassette tapes that your dad got a hold of, for 23 years I was gone every weekend somewhere around the country uh, giving health lectures. I, I kind of retired from that. Wow. I still do a few, but... Uh, Anyway, yeah, I just, I love this. I remember one time a guy came up before I started doing the cassette tapes. He said, uh, what are you selling? I said, nothing. I just want people to know this message. And he said, you need to start getting your cassette tapes out and so forth. So that's, that's kind of interesting story. <laughs> well, I bet you it was one of my dad's friends that had attended one of your seminars and we got hold yeah. of one of your tapes and it has been around for a very yeah. long time. My dad has shared your message often. Yeah. What would you say is your philosophy on health? Do you have like an overall, you know, overarching philosophy? Yeah, it's, uh, I touched on it earlier, but I just can't emphasize it enough. It's what are you doing wrong that's causing your, your health to fail? And we're, we're sick because of one of two reasons. We're either ignorant or we're indifferent. In other words, I know coffee's bad for me, but I'm going to still keep drinking it. And But I, I found if I tell a patient, don't eat sugar, they might do that for three days. But if I explain to them what sugar does to them, now I've educated them and they're more motivated. Uh, I've even had patients over the years uh, tell me, I, I get what you're telling me, but I'm not ready to make that change. But they'll still send me patients <laughs> because truth is truth. You know, that, that whole philosophy is what are you doing wrong? It's your, it's your lifestyle. So that's, that's my big picture is to try to get across to patients and, and not with, not with judgment, not with judgment. Right. Just, and just, here's what you've been doing wrong. And let me motivate you by educating you as to what you can do uh, you know, the, uh, the amount of money people spend on healthcare is just crazy when all they have to do is make a few changes in, in the grocery store. And, and people say, well, it costs me more to eat more fruits and vegetables. I said, yes, but would you rather have your health or take more drugs? I mean, which one is up to you? <laughs> right. You the pay now or pay now, yeah. pay now or pay yeah. later. So, well, this has been wonderful. I cannot thank you enough for being here and sharing all of your wisdom. And I, I agree with you in that the education aspect, that's really what won me over. It was undeniable to me once I learned things and how I was harming my body. And I didn't want to create more health problems and, um, you know, struggles for myself in life than what was needed. So you kind of have that sobering moment where once you're faced with that Im information, you decide, okay, what am I going to do with this information? Am I going to take it and apply it and make myself, a, make a different future for myself? Or am I going to ignore it and, you know, just kind of be the, the results of whatever that lifestyle and mindset looks like. And it's important for people to get surrounded by other uh, other like-minded people in, in the health, because just like the Christian life, if we're not in church involved in groups, we just tend to drift. But because you know the society is eating junk, and so we tend to want to drift there. Yeah. And but it's uh, I'm sure you've heard the saying, you know, we eat to live, not live to eat. And to get that mindset across, that's what I try to do. This, we live, we eat to live. It's, we're here to live and to produce. Not, I, I, my my accountant is. Uh, he loves his food, and he he says I've never met a person before that couldn't care less about going to a special restaurant. And I couldn't. I mean, I just he, 
<laughs> I said, yeah, because it's it's not about the. I mean, I enjoy going to nice restaurants, but but it's it's I'm not, I'm not about living and helping other people. <laughs> I love that. Well, and I'm sure there's a whole nother rabbit hole we could go down of the the emotional and mental influences of food, like the chemical changes that happen in the body. And in some cases, I know our food has chemicals in it that kind of hijack our brain and our taste buds and literally cause us to want to eat more of Mm -hmm. that. Um, But I just, yeah, it's quite the world we live in. We've got to really take control of our mind and our mindset and, and be intentional. Yeah. Well, Dr. Robbins, where can people find you? And um, if you could share with us your different books and whatnot that you have out there. So if people, it, this has been so great today because this hasn't, this has seemed very doable, I would say. It's not discouraging. It's not one of those, you know, talks that you you don't feel like you can accomplish. It's good information that's empowering and motivating. And yet, um, you know, you're not over here, you know, whipping us that we're, you know, have an ice cream once a week or that kind of thing when we invest the other days. So where can people find uh, more about you? Well, the website is dr, is in Dr. Dr. Joel Robbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S.com. And on there, you can find out about the clinic. I work with patients all across the country by remote. I've done that for years. So we get on the phone or Zoom or however you want to do that. and uh get their case history and then just whatever tests we need to do i can order those locally or sometimes we send out kits collect and, and just get a, a feel for um evaluation of what they where they are and then i can line out specific uh recommendations and just keep to touch with them on so that's find out about our that program uh also the products that we have my books there's there's the juicing book on there, and there's uh, I've got CDs. I haven't, we haven't. I'm still old fashioned, but my kids are trying to get me to do the pod. What do you call those? Where you download the my CDs? Yeah, get it all online. Get online, or, yeah. So we're we're getting yeah. there. And then the the big book came out about a year and a half ago. That uh, all those cassettes that you listen to, I put it all into a book. And, oh, that's And amazing. it's uh, health through nutrition, and the first. About a third of it is the science in, in layman's terms of how food affects our body. And then the, the rest of it is all the practical stuff of, of menus, meal plans, recipes, my recipes, and just some, just some guidelines of some of the things we talked about as far as uh, when you go out to eat with a friend, eat what they serve you, you know, that, that sort of, and don't feel guilty about it and, and so forth. So yeah, health through nutrition. Um, that is going to be a gold mine of information. So if you're listening, you're going to want to go get that because let me tell you the health tapes and all the different talks I've heard. I've also seen some videos on YouTube as well. Um, but that is going to be just the, the gold mine to, to get yeah. all your good stuff. Yeah. So, well, Dr. Robbins, I want to thank you so much for your truly leading and acting upon your convictions in this life. As you said, you just traveled around around the country, not selling a thing, but just wanting to educate and help others. And I cannot think of a more incredible mission than someone spending their time and their heart and their energy in investing in other people and helping other people kind of wake up, as I call it, to to this toxic world that we live in and how they can do better. So it's so admirable of you and I am just incredibly honored and I, I cannot thank you enough for um, just putting out there all, all the information and, and um, educating us all these years. Um, I just I truly pray that you'll continue to do so um, as God has used you. I know he will continue to. Well, thank you. It's been, a, been great being with you. Thank you. 
Thank you. And everyone, we will see you all next week on our next podcast. Make sure to check out Dr. Joel Robbins and all his great resources and go get some more information. And there will be more analogies in these books. (laughs) You will love them. (laughs) But bye for now. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. All right. I just I just ended the recording. Okay. How'd we do? Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm just gonna I gotta edit some of my stuff in the beginning and whatnot, but it went great and I'm looking forward to it. And I will make sure and send Candace um the recording so that she can pass it along to you. Actually, I'm fine. She told me you were gonna do that. Okay. I, I, that's good. It went, went well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm good. Great. Okay, good. Well, um, I'm just so honored. Thank you so much for all you do. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. And we'll we'll talk again, I'm sure, yeah. one day. And you have a great one, Dr. Okay. Robbins. Okay.